Yes, card counting works. And yes, you can make real money as a card counter. But if you can't accurately keep the count every round, you have no chance of gaining the edge against the casino. Hey guys, I'm Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship. For those that don't know my story, I've been a card counter for over 15 years. I've personally won over 600,000 as a card counter. I've run teams responsible for winning close to $4 million. And through Blackjack Apprenticeship, we've trained more successful card counters than anybody. But it all starts with knowing how to count cards. If you spend any amount of time practicing card counting, you know that the skill doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes your running count is wrong, and if you don't know why it's wrong, you can't address it. And so what's gonna keep you from just making the same mistake over and over again? I still remember the first person I ever trained to count cards, it was my buddy CJ, and he was a smart guy. He picked it up pretty quickly, but he would sometimes be wrong and we wouldn't know why. And my teammates and I were not gonna send him out with our money into the casinos if he couldn't keep his count accurately. And it was so frustrating. He was frustrated, I was frustrated. And then we finally figured out what he was doing wrong. We fixed it and the problem was solved. Over the years, as I've trained card counters, there've been the same handful of things that seem to pop up over and over again. I wanna share them with you guys so that you can be aware of these issues and you can make sure that you're not making these same mistakes. Well, the first thing I would say is when you screw up on the dealer's up card. I would say more often than not, when someone gets messed up on the rank count, it has to do with the dealer's up card. And there are a few different ways this happens. Let me show you what I mean. So the first would be just forgetting to count the dealer's card. So imagine we have this scenario and we're counting I say one two one zero still zero and then start playing your hand out sometimes I see players just forget the dealer's card and the point is you have to have a system that takes every card into account once and only once flawlessly without exception so the second scenario would be double counting the dealer's up card so we're in the same situation we've got one two one zero those cancel. And so we've got a running one and then we play it out and we're saying we're still one. And then this guy's got a blackjack and this guy stays and then zero, one, zero. So if you were paying attention there, I counted this three twice. And so actually what the count should have been was it was one and then it would be zero D1 or negative one or minus one or M1 or however you want to put it. You need to make sure that you're counting the dealer's up card once and only once. There's a couple reasons this might happen. One is if you just count it twice, but the other is following the dealer's procedure. So let's back this up. And when the dealer plays out their hand, what they do 99% of the time is they slide the up card over to the player's left, then the whole card goes to the player's right, and then any hits happen over here again to the player's left. So then you know that the player's card is always the second from the player's right. But occasionally you get a dealer that does something like this, and then if you're not paying attention, you think that this was actually the up card, and then you count these which cancel each other, but that's not actually correct. If you get these flipped in your head, you gotta be paying attention, which was the dealer's up card. Don't trust that the dealer's gonna follow the procedure 100% of the time. So you gotta be aware of what the dealer's up card is and make sure you don't count that card twice. So the second scenario is actually what was happening with my buddy CJ, and it seems so simple, almost stupid, but I've seen it happen with a couple different card counters, and that's that they got the sixes and the nines confused. So let me show you what I mean. If you look at the bottom corner of the card, you think, oh, that's a six, then you're, you're mistaken because that's a nine. Or in this situation, if you look at the bottom corner, you say, oh, it's a nine. No, actually that's a six. And same with this right here. And so all he had to do was become aware of not looking at the bottom corner for a six or a nine, but actually the top corner for those cards. Once we figure that out, problem solved, he never screwed up on the running count again. So the third problem I see is when players forget to update the running count as they're playing out their hand. And this is a big one. And I can usually tell when it's happening and it looks something like this. So let's say we have a hand like this and our running count right now would be three. And then you gotta make your playing decision. You split, you double, you hit, you gotta split again. You got double again, whoops, you double. You got double again. And then the dealer busts and you're really excited. And I ask, what's the running count? And you say, I have no idea. 
I stopped counting a long time ago. This happens all the time. We're not at the casino to play blackjack. We're at the casino to generate EV or more specifically positive EV. If we're not updating the count with every card that comes out of the shoe, then we're not gonna be generating positive EV and we're really wasting our time at the tables or worse yet, we're just gambling. So when you're training at home, remember the first thing you do with every card that comes out of the shoe is update the running count. Before you add up your hand, you update the running count. Before you think through your basic strategy decision, you update the running count. Before you high five the other players at the table because the dealer just busted with your top bet out there, you update the running count. Then you high five the other players at the table because the dealer busted with your top bet out there. The point is you update the running count with every card that comes out before you do anything else. Let's redo that hand, but we'll do it properly now. You've got a running three and you say, I'm gonna split. Still three, I'm gonna double. Two. Three, I'm gonna split. Still three, I'm gonna double. Still three, I'm gonna double. Still three, two, one, and bust. Running one and we're repeating one, one, one. That's the way you need to play every hand. All right, the fourth mistake I see people make, and this one is really scary, is when a player changes their true count to their running count. We had a guy that played on our blackjack team and unfortunately he wasn't winning uh, over a long period of time and we were trying to figure out what, what might be going on here. We test him out, we tested all our players regularly. And in this situation, let's say we've got about five decks left and he had a running 20. So he has to figure out his bet. And so we'd say 20 divided by five decks left means we have a true four. And we say, what's your running count? which should have been 20, and he says four. So instead of saying the running count, he'd replaced that with the true count of four. And so then he was gonna be adding to the number four with every card that came out rather than adding to the number 20. This is a huge mistake. That means that your bets are gonna be way off, your playing deviations are gonna be way off. You cannot afford to make this mistake. How do you avoid doing this? Well, what you have to do is the number that's repeating in your brain over and over is that running count. So you'd be saying 20, 20, 20. And you're gonna have to pause it for a split second to say 20 divided by five is a true four. And then you go back to 20, 20, 20. You don't say 20 divided by five is four, 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 four. You have to train yourself to a point where you're not gonna make this mistake. So this last mistake that I see people make is I'm just gonna call it a brain fart. And the reality is that as a card counter, sometimes you miss a card. So what do we do about that? Well, the first thing is you have to have very high standards. You have to train to a point where these mistakes are incredibly low. Secondly, you have to have a standard that is still going to give you a very strong winning edge. So I'm gonna share with you the standards we've had for every team I've ever run. For our teams, what we considered acceptable is that in a six deck shoe, if I were to test you out or watch you play in a casino, you would not get off on the running count by more than one per shoe. So you can have your running count wrong at most by running one for an entire six deck shoe. That means you can't get your running count wrong by one multiple times in a shoe. You can't ever have your running count off by two or three or, or more. Train to those standards and I would say that's within what's acceptable for a shoe game for double deck. I'd say you wanna be even more accurate because your rank count can throw your true count off very quickly in double deck or single deck. So until then, keep grinding, put in the work, and for weekly stories, updates, and advice for card counters, subscribe below, make sure you have notifications turned on, and you can learn more at blackjackapprenticeship.com.